Amy and Ed, how are you both? Tell me, when did you get married and where did you get married? So we got married on the 9th of July um, this year. Uh, first time we'd arranged it, so really lucky. Um, and we got married in a vineyard in Burton on the Wolds um, in Leicestershire. It was the first time you organised it, but it was a change of date. We originally was going to do it in May. May. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, we went to look at the vines the May before, and they were just they were just still bare. They were like sticks. <laughs> we're like, yeah. oh, people are going to just be seeing that we're married in a field of twigs. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got it in your kind of your mind's eye, you want it to be, you know, looking like vines rather than looking like twigs. Had you forgotten that you changed the date? Did that, yeah, kind I of. Think so, yeah, um, I think when we like locked in on the July date I think that's it we it felt that it was then just properly systems systems go for so it felt like the right thing to do was to move that date a couple of months on yeah because it's got to be if you've got this in your mind and you've got this vision then the best thing to do isn't it is just to run with it and work towards that because we didn't want the vines to be what they look like currently in September which is absolutely wild and crazy yeah. um, we didn't want them to be sticks so we knew what look we were going for and because this venue had had no you know it was so just a bare nothing (laughs) it was it was yeah Yeah. not a venue really we were just like we've got this vision and and we're gonna have to work towards that (laughs) do you find the venue because you're right it's not a venue it's something that you completely created um so how did you find it and what work was involved to kind of make it to be what you wanted it to be well, I think the best thing about our venue was it was an actual labour of love from start to finish and it, it transpired and people still comment on it now. Um, but our, when I was a child, my parents owned a restaurant, which is actually in front of the vineyard. Um, they bought it when I was about four. So I, my whole life I spent quad biking and running around in wellies in, in these fields. Um, and then... I've, I've built a relationship with the farmer there. He's like a second part of the family. Um, and then we went and did a wine run, which is um, it's called Wild Wine Run. And it's a 10 kilometre run. And every two and a half kilometres, you taste wine. So because they planted this vineyard, I was like, let me show you my home, like where I grew up and let's drink wine while we do it. Um, and then we just walked the dogs there. We Yeah, we've got we, a couple of dogs. So we, we every time we're up that way in Leicestershire, we, we take the dogs out and take a walk down to the vineyard and so that's how we really got to know the area quite well and I think when we were deciding to get married we were there going well we didn't really want to necessarily get married um where you were from because it's in Portsmouth so it was like it's so far away from mm. you know your brother in Scotland my family in Yorkshire um in Bedford we've only lived here three years or so so there's no nothing that that means something to yeah. us really yeah and so that felt, and it was you that suggested it over Christmas time. And so typically you went, what about doing this? And so by the time he didn't finish the sentence, I'd rang Trevor and said, <laughs> I'd gone, marquees are out. I said, but here's semi TV, well, but I we said it. it, we need a deposit. And he was like, Amy, I'm not even proposed. You <laughs> <laughs> said it lightheartedly. I think lightheartedly I said, it's like, it would be good to get married on the vineyard. And I thought I kind of dismissed it as that. But yeah, Amy being Amy, suddenly, well, you, you first of all phoned loads of marquees and they said basically no, didn't they? Because they just want yeah. a flat, empty field. Yeah. And it just wasn't what we wanted. So, you know, we don't want a flat, empty field. Um, so we, we wanted it almost it like... written it off as, as a venue until, well, until we came across you guys who kind of said, oh, we'll put it wherever. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. It was like, well, we've got these poles and we can move them and it sounds amazing. Let's go. And I was like, they're, they're so excited as well. Yeah. And so, so as you said, then, it, then all I needed to do then was propose. So, yeah. I hadn't, we had all this conversation and we had even booked uh, you guys before I had even proposed. <laughs> we knew it was happening. It just needed to happen. Yeah. 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 So when did the proposal actually happen? <sighs> In May. That was my idea. Yeah, because Olivia was born in March and you did it like six weeks after that. Yeah, and we went true. into London and he proposed. And, so it was a good job we did uh, postpone it. So just, yeah. <laughs> might, we might have got married before I proposed. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was the year before. Oh, yeah. That's so, um, the, actual, the formal proposal happened in, in May, but I think we'd already planned our invites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you you kind of you'd done pretty well with the planning at this point hadn't you before then that you kind of yeah. proposed because well, <laughs> i i guess it, to cover the proposal uh, at christmas time you know, I I get it's I gave a promise to say that what twenty one I would propose and twenty two would get married, because I wanted to do it you know the formal way of asking Amy's dad and um, and also because of just coming out the back of COVID, what I didn't want to do is propose and then just stay indoors um, yeah. and not see anyone. So I kind of wait wanted to wait until uh, you know post COVID where people could celebrate with friends and family. Yeah. So I, that that was. Not what delayed my proposal, but yeah. but at Christmas time we were speaking, going, but you know, just because of that, it we doesn't need to put us off from planning things. Of course, and, yeah. and Amy's very good at planning. Yeah, you are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew the venue owners, and it was just a case of picking the phone, mm-hmm. having a conversation with them. Was it? Yeah, yeah, they were really good. And they were like, oh, we might do this again, because they loved it. Like, you know, they're so they have, they helped us out from start to finish. And he was like, his exact quote was, it's your bloody land, do what you want. So that was it. We we just had to go off and do it, because like I say, it is like an extended family. So it was, he just let us crack on. (laughs) Yeah, bro. And you were really clear on your vision of how you wanted it where you saw the TPs as well on the side, you literally crystal clear, you knew exactly what you wanted. Um, so talk us through that then. So what, what so you've, you always, you've already said you had the TPs and that kind of, that worked with the landscape as well there, didn't it? Um, well, yes and no. Um, it's, it, it kind of just fit in, but <laughs> with, with a few of the uh, the, what do yeah, you, the we had rows. to persuade the um, winemaker to take away some of his vines. <laughs> yeah, because... it was tight. I think Craig was very happy he took them away. It he would was. have been tight, and it would have meant that there wouldn't have been like that free flow between the front entrance and the side entrance. So, yeah, we we did have to say to the mm-hmm. the winemaker. <laughs> We, we kind of just said, yeah, there's not many vines on this this row, so do you mind just pulling them up? Yeah, it was a bit reluctant, but Trevor just went down with his um, tractor yeah. and ran over them. <laughs> I, I, think like, Craig, I must admit, I think Craig was relieved that you just got that little bit of extra space, that breathing. breathing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was, and it was it. perfect. It was perfect when it did, and it shows in the photos. You can see the kind of the free flow of what we wanted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we had that, I think we had that clear vision because... We, we both know, knew what we wanted. I've been in hospitality for so long. So I, I knew I didn't want that formal wedding. It just wasn't for me. You know, this is Ed's second wedding and he wanted something totally different mm. as well. So we, we, and we both, our life is food, drink, partying. We love hosting. We love events. Um, and so we wanted it to really reflect us, yeah. um, which is why we stripped it it back um and I don't think it took away the fact that it was still a wedding um because I think some people feel that pressure for it to be that formal structured wedding and actually by stripping it back it still felt Mm. exactly like a wedding it still went super quick but there was no lull in between and it it was just yeah yeah we we, I don't think we'd change anything no (laughs) tell me about your ceremony then so how did you choose to do your ceremony uh, well, the ceremony, we actually met Jo from My Perfect Ceremony and she helped us out loads. We were planning on yeah, getting right. married yeah. there in, because the law was supposed to change before then. Um, so we we're planning on um, getting married there legally, um, which we actually created our aisle between the vines. Yeah. Um, so I kind of popped out of some vines and walked in between the rows um but the law didn't change so we our legal wedding we actually did on April Fool's Day um (laughs) and didn't tell anyone apart from our parents so that was quite um quite nice for us just to kind of have that moment um but it was very um the wording was really simple and that was it and then we kind of yeah and then we spoke with Joe, and she just completely customized it yeah. like she came to see us at the um at the vineyard and I said bring your wellies we're going to walk down with the dogs and we just walked and chatted um and she could see exactly what we wanted and yeah. and was was super excited to do something a bit different as well and you can connect with your ceremony area with your teepees didn't you as well yeah, so the uh, the um, festoon walkway and the um, we added on some of the matting 
and that created our aisle. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit of a natural parting in the rows, which created an aisle. So we were just thinking if we had that, had the TP going up the aisle, uh, yeah, it was a good look. And so guests, they were all set out side for ceremony. Yeah, so we did it. We wanted it graduated. So we had three rows of hay bales with sheets on. Then we had some benches um, and then we had the rest of the people standing. So it kind of, as you were looking back, everyone kind of went up in a up in a shape but it was so hot it was like 35 degrees so there was, it yeah. was it was the put we could not the only thing we thought because you always say like what's your backup plan if it's raining we're like there isn't one we're not even <laughs> going to discuss it and yeah it was glorious I mean, no, it was I guess, the extreme oh. wasn't it you didn't have rain but actually you had it, it very hot i mean our, our backup how did you deal with your heat yeah yeah, would have it, it had it have rained, we would have had to maybe have closed the and had it had the wedding inside the teepee, which you know would have would have been absolutely fine. But yeah, we we wanted it to be an outdoor wedding, so the fact that we timed it for a heat wave was was great. <laughs> and I think even the week after it was even hotter. So I think you know we yeah, we just well. about got it okay. Was there any uh, special measures that you put in place for the heat? Well, uh, jo, jo had her umbrellas. Joe bought some sun umbrellas. Um, in the <laughs> toilets, we had all your different sun cream, your kids stuff. Um, Jenny and her ice cream van. The caterers yeah. were incredible. Like the, our caterers, I actually knew her because I used to work with her years ago. Um, and they were just so on it. They bought extra waters, extra ice. It was just I think sort they of sent someone out to get more water. Didn't they? Yeah, they were just brilliant. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it was just I think the Great British weather were quite happy for a warm day. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you do worry, don't you? Well, what if it rains? And actually, there's that other end of the scale that you need to consider is if actually it's hot like you had there's there's precautions that you need to kind of put in place and we were in like where the vineyard is it's on a, a slope down so you know it's warm in the day but when it drops at night because it's it's got that breeze going down it really it drops. drops so we had flip-flops for people at the top of the yeah. vineyard because we got them to walk through the vines to uh, to get to the tp um and then in the evening we're providing blankets in the fire pit like it, it is two extremes in somewhere so remote yeah and it is, it's that balance, isn't it, of making sure your space transitions day to night. But when it's so hot in the day, you just want that airy breeze. Because you, you had a lot of your TP open, and that was always what you actually was your plan A, wasn't it? You always wanted yeah, that you could you embrace did. the views, really, and everything else that you've got going on with your ceremony. Yeah, we wanted the two ends closed and then the kind of strip at the front open. So it it kind of created this um, this like circle of where I'm only because one thing that we didn't want and we've been to weddings where it has happened that the venues are so um, so big and there's so many places for people to go, especially in like your hotels and places that all of a sudden all your guests are are gone um and we wanted everyone to like celebrate in this party so it kind of created this yeah. really nice circle um where the vines kept people in and the tp and it went all and the a, way around and two strategically placed hay bales <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. booked people in yeah, yeah exactly because as you say you don't you could have 200 people and in a big field it could they can get dispersed so we we're yeah. kind of con using the tp using the toilets to uh to create like a little barricade them in <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we're all friends here <laughs> <laughs> oh bro um so you spoke about your caterers and how amazing they were what was your actual wedding menu what did you feed your guests both daytime and evening okay so i mean the food we've that's all people seem to talk about at the moment is how good the food was but we didn't really eat any of it <laughs> um, so we, we again we didn't want the three course sit down we didn't want that so we um we had canapes as everyone starter um just after we got married so we kind of condensed that day um quite quite close together and it's probably worth explaining that we booked a pizza van um, for the evening for about eight o'clock and they actually um uh went bankrupt and yeah. didn't tell us until a few weeks before so the alpine pizza were amazing and we're like look we can do it but it's got to be early it's got to be six half six service so yeah. that crammed everything in so we were a bit worried about that because obviously that's a lot of food in short space but because we stripped it it back a little bit we could have canapes as soon as we got married which was bao buns, sushi, prawn, like all sorts of bits and pieces like that. 
Um, and then that kind of led through about half an hour, 40 minutes later for our main course. So they didn't have a starter. Yeah. And we had um, sharing boards on their tables with, oh, it was amazing. Like the burgers were incredible with um, slow cooked lamb, chicken, potato salad. So a real nice barbecue kind of style. And then that barbecue yeah. mushrooms and things like that. Yeah, mushrooms for veggies, vegans, and, vegans and pulled jackfruit for vegans yeah. as well. Um, and then we had no dessert sat down. So all around the teepee, we had tables. Um, we had a sweet table, we had macaroons, donuts. Our friend who is the most incredible cake maker ever, she doesn't do it um, professionally, she, she's a chef, but she, she made us oh, 110 different cupcakes, which are like sticky toffee pudding with yeah. ginger oh, marshmallow. Yeah. Oh, there were some left over, and I swear I could have eaten all of them. <laughs> like they were no, brilliant. Yeah. Um. So, and then that was kind of our dessert. So it was, you know, whenever you're ready for something sweet, off you go and and grab it. Because I I don't think people, well, especially in the heat, people definitely wouldn't have had a three course meal anyway. No. So um, work for you in that respect. And you mentioned Jenny as well. So you had ice cream. She came in the gap yeah. about half past four to half past six. And, and she, she had ice more cream. ice cream because of it being a hot day. Yeah, so that <laughs> was really good. And then we had the Alpine pizza guys. Um, and then at ten, half past ten, because the restaurant that was my parents is now an Indian restaurant. Okay. Right. We went up to them and said, oh, half past ten, can you bring down about 80 samosas? <laughs> oh, really? So, I bet they went down a proper tree at that oh, time, though. Yeah, yeah, so they ran down with the tray of the samosas and they were gone in a flash. Were they a last minute decision or yeah, a week before? Yeah, maybe a week before. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there was like bits of food. It was never a massive, there was never a massive center point yeah. on it. It just was just a, a graze through the day. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Which, based on the weather, I'm, I think was perfect. Yeah, we're yeah. not very, or I'm definitely not very good at doing the sit down. And then you get up yeah. and you go to each table and say hello to, I was like, I want to sit here and enjoy a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> good on you did you spend much time together on the day yeah yeah yeah, we made a massive point to do that didn't we so um our photographer was brilliant so she in when people were getting sat down she kind of before we went in she took us away for a little bit of time together um and then obviously during the meal and then afterwards like me and you dance I was gonna say the we're, whole time. we're on the dance floor quite a bit um <laughs> and most of our wedding photos are us dancing um and then she took most of our photos we asked um she wanted to do them at golden hour rather than in the day which was I'd never kind of come across that really I always thought the you know there was all these photos in the day but she took us away for golden hour and we had about an hour yeah maybe not and maybe that, was that nice. long but that was really nice and there's a video of us just coming back from having some photos taken and we're running between the vines to say hi to and oh. we were just we were just there or yeah. I didn't feel like at the end of the day going oh I hadn't I hadn't really seen you no um no, was nice. but yeah it was yeah so we we did kind of factor that good that in tell me about sort of styling what did you do in the teepees did you do a lot what was that what was how did you approach that oh well we we discussed it about having wanting to have like lanterns and things and then in the end we just thought actually we we just want it to be fairly stripped back I think because the we're like, are lovely they're yeah, beautiful as and, they are and with the lights that you've yeah. got we just thought it doesn't need anything more yeah. and because we've got the obviously being on on the vineyard we kind of almost replicated that insides with the benches yeah. so we had the benches and the um we had artificial rather than wasting all them flowers. We had artificial down the middle, but like vines of yeah. eucalyptus yeah. ivy and things. Um, but so we it's had, like the vines became then the benches. And yeah, uh, the, the kind of styling didn't really take too much time in our minds, no. did it? We kind of knew that, you know, we wanted it very simple cutlery and then a, a bit down the middle. So we just had a hessian runner to kind of protect that middle bit of the table, the vines down the middle, and then some bowls with candles in so that went like floating in the water so that when on the night then that could could be lit but the fairy lights are beautiful and plenty um you know because we, we were there going oh god we need more we need lights coming from the ceiling and we need these like balls coming down like we're seeing and actually like it was just and the photos just yeah. the focus is on the venue then rather yeah. than on the decoration two of the the vines we put blue ribbon down one which is what we wanted all the guests to walk down 
and then yeah. we put ribbon on the other one which is what we got Amy to walk down part of our wedding planning we didn't think we would have to do but um we had to felt the roof of a shed and um varnish it all which I mean I don't know many people have to factor that into their their wedding well, planning <laughs> but in there yeah. we created like a little space with some cocktails I make a scrapbook every year um of our of our year so they were in there for people to flip through the guest book and stuff so that was a nice little space um, but the style in the chair backs, I bought some cheesecloth off Amazon and I washed it and ripped it and turned it into chair backs. So we wanted to do what we could our, ourselves. Yeah, no, perfect. So anyone venturing into wedding planning themselves and they're considering the options and they said, well, would you do an outdoor wedding? What would you say about it? What would you advise? What would your tips be to them? Oh, do it, do it. Yeah. Like a hundred, even if the weather's awful, I was like, right, we're going to buy loads of multicolored umbrellas and we're going to dance in the rain. I just like, we spent about a week worrying about the weather and then the rest of it was like, do you know what, what will be, will be just enjoy it. But I'll say like, you, you get what you put in because we, well, we got married on the Saturday and did the TV go up on the Tuesday? Yeah. And we pretty much spent four pretty full days getting it the way we wanted yeah. uh, in hot weather. Um, but we actually enjoyed it. You know, it's four days of not working and just <laughs> being outside in the sun and just getting the venue the way you want. So, you know, it, it, it took time to get it the way we wanted, but, oh, it was worth it on the day. Yeah. You just, you know, all those little details that we put there. And you know, it was us that put it there. It just yeah. made it worth it. So. Yeah. Like even the table numbers, I bought corks and yeah. made the corks into table numbers. And my dad made slow gin from the slows from the vineyard for the favours. Like, um, and then we got and, your auntie I, to help put all the plate settings yeah. out. And, yeah, and I think what I think... I understand why people, um, especially in sort of venues where you can't, you, uh, not venues, sort of where your TP is placed and you need to be able, you've got that condensed time. I understand why people will get someone to come and decorate and style it for you because they just know what they're doing and it's mm. it's done. Um, but we wanted to make the most out of, you know, you get married in this one moment at that time. So make, make the most of the days before, during and after, because then you're not taking it all in on the day because yeah. you've, you've seen it and you've you've loved that venue from start to finish. Um, so, yeah. yeah, do what you can. Um, and, yeah. the li- yeah, just absolutely enjoy all of it. And, you know, the little things that you might think are so important aren't the end of the world. Um, so everyone said to us, like, you've thought of everything. You've thought about mm. how people are going to get there. You've thought about what's in the bathroom. You've thought about so many bits and pieces that pe- uh, people like, I wouldn't have even thought about that but then I was on the day going oh so no one lit the candles on the evening and no one turned the lights on in the fairy like uh, you know the next day I was thinking about it and I was like but no one else noticed that yeah so it's like don't pre- don't stress about it yeah um and make sure that I think tip for the biggest advice from me personally anyway mm. is put put you into it do what you love yeah, yeah don't don't worry about you know we had um parents saying oh but what about this and what about that and we went we have sorted it trust us and we kind of went I understand but trust us and we we just made that about who we were and yeah, it definitely. and it it became that and we party I I wore trainers I was my mom bought me some spark pink sparkly shoes I was like no I've got Converse on and that's it. I'm walking yeah. down the aisle, dancing till my feet hurt. And, and we and loved I, it. I definitely yeah. agree that your wedding oozed personality. You pulled oh, the two of you into it and everything you did. And even when you said, oh, we didn't really do much styling. I think you kind of, you know, don't, you, the amount of personal touches that you put in, like you said, actually having your guests up there, as much as that's not styling, per se what we would think about it it is it's about how you've really brought your personality into your wedding day and I definitely think it oozed it yeah we, we had we had it right from the start so when people arrived at the top of the vineyard we arranged um buses for them to to come on a bus yeah so we got off the bus and there was a um some shelves with 
gin in a tin and beers in tins and flip-flops and obviously Ed's family are from the south and mine are from the north so we had a sign at the top saying Southern, southerners read this and it was um take some flip-flops for the grass so you don't fall on your ass <laughs> and then we had another one that said northerners read this and it was like take flip-flops for the grass so you don't fall on your ass and everyone was like <laughs> you've, you've just like, you've just Brilliant. like the difference I love it that's brilliant <laughs> excellent oh fabulous and your budget what what your budget that you thought you were going to spend on what you spent how far off were you we were really bad we didn't really have a massive budget like we didn't really plan a budget yeah. we just had what we wanted we knew that we didn't want to go nuts I suppose yeah. we knew what we kind of had in mind but the, to be honest um you know the the biggest expense is the TP, isn't it it's your venue it's where everything happens so I guess on top of the TP, it was probably that again would you say yeah. including the dress and the soups yeah. and yeah, yeah. everything Food, like that. drink some yeah oh. cake was a hundred pounds all of our desserts because our friend did it yeah. Catering for They're, all of it was only four grand. So, the, but I thought some of the supply, like the bar, I thought was good value. Did anyone manage the day or oversee the day for you? Was there anybody? No. And did... well, uh, apart from us, just my friend who we asked to do MC duties. So I gave him a list of our uh, our timing. Oh, like the first dance and the cake. Yeah, and then. just said this is roughly what we want to keep to, and then he would just come up to me and just. <laughs> like ask me if if you wanted to or not yeah, if we were ready yeah. I introduced him to like the supplier and Joe mm -hmm. the celebrant just to see if anyone oversaw it you know it was mainly me and you but um I did ask a friend of mine just well, to this is all in one time. space and it's a bit more free flow and it just kind of it yeah happens, well that's it, it because because our ceremony was essentially the same site as the thing that like, yeah. no one had to be anywhere like we had the, a bus drop people off at 11 45 and it picked people up at 12 hours later yeah. so we just thought you know what we've we people will naturally gravitate towards where they want to be and essentially for us it was just a, a big party yeah. um and kids god they made it oh we had the dome for the kids yeah. the tabs on the roof so we could take the roof off good and that was oh my god it was like there was stuff all over the place but they absolutely loved it yeah, um yeah. Your experience with Sammy TP, I'm just going to round upon that. How was that from sort of start to finish? Over overwhelmingly simple, um, yeah. and you just had our backs through everything. We we couldn't have had it at the venue because, as I said, we we yeah. looked at marquees and they said no. So simply, we could not have had it at our venue of choice had it not been for Sammy TP. Yeah, and you just got on board with it straight away and I can remember like calling you going how oh, bloody hell am I going to explain what we want and you were like yeah let's do it I'm on Google Maps so I can see it Let, let's go like we've never done this before let's do and and that was it you were just with us for everything and even when I had my panic moment going Jodie I, I need to talk about this and I don't know what to do and you were like yeah let's sort it and I was like oh and right up until yeah. the pizza people cancelling you were like right we can deal with this and and you just totally stress-free and if we could your mum the other day said you'll have to do it all again and I thought she meant with another woman <laughs> but she actually then is you need to do the day, the again. day again and if we day could day. do it all again we would we would do it exactly the same because we loved it and that went like we got our photos this week yeah and looking through it it's just yeah it no, it's just it was perfect and you just made thing. it you made it our wedding and you you made it us as well which was so perfect so oh, like, really, thank just, you. your and your team are amazing like yeah. when Craig pulled up with all the, the guys that like they are just brilliant which I was I was like right bacon sandwiches cups of tea I was like what would like let's do, like it was it was so much fun as soon as you look after the team like that they they are forever like in <laughs> with you as well like that's what so they were on, on the close down obviously it was uh, no on the when they're putting up, sorry, it was scorching hot. And I walked, my mum came in the afternoon to bring our daughter to have a little nosy what was going on. I was like, mum, bring some stubby beers. And she rolled up and I was like, boys, I was like, how, like they're only half a pint. I was like, have a cold beer. Yeah, it's such oh, a treat. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's those things that they really appreciated too. And we are so lucky because I know that we've got such an incredible 
team and any build that they take on, they take it on as though it's theirs. So they want it to look exactly, they want to, your vision, they want to bring that to life. Yeah, okay. it was perfect. It was all perfect. Oh, bro. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this. No, thank you. Okay, no it's been problem. nice to relive it again. Yeah. <laughs>